Hello, this is Hannah and I'm going to talk to you today about our gliders kit. This is a really fun kit to just get out and have some fun and do a lot of good math and science with it that is applicable to every grade from kindergarten up to high school. So let's talk a little bit about what the kit contains. It has four different gliders, two large and two small, and in each side there is an option that includes the flight control ailerons and two that do not. So these provide you with four different variables you can investigate when you're doing your experiments. One of the other things you're going to need to do before you actually start flying is to build a launcher. What you want to do is have a launcher that you can measure exactly how far back you're pulling your glider every time. So we use a meter stick and what you're going to do is find the 20 centimeter mark on the front and then flip it over. That puts you at 7 and 7 eighths inches on the reverse, at least of most meter sticks. Then take a small wood screw and screw it in just enough that it holds its place. There we go. You want to make sure it does not go all the way through the front. And then do a second one just for stability. Once you've done that, take your three rubber bands and loop them one into the next like this. You can adjust the number and amount of rubber bands you use depending on the experiment you're doing. Next, wrap these around the two screws like this and then back between them just so that they're good and secure. As a final securing detail, we like to take a small binder clip and just secure it right over the top. To launch your glider, simply pull the rubber band all the way to where the first knot is at the end of the meter stick. That way you're getting a consistent force between trials. And then loop the hook that's on the bottom of the glider onto the end of the last rubber band and pull back to your designated distance. Using the tail of the airplane as what you're holding, then make sure there's no one in front of you and that your hands are completely out of the way before releasing. You're also going to want to make sure that you're shooting off at the same angle every time, or at least at a designated angle if you are adjusting the angles for the variables in your experiment. A good way to do that is to use our clinometer kit, which you can simply secure to the back of the meter stick to know exactly what angle you're launching at. The clinometer also offers a nice chance to talk about supplementary angles. Once it's set and ready to go, simply release. These are meant to be shot outside. If you shoot them inside and are hitting walls or things like that, there's a good chance they will break. But if you shoot them outside onto a soft surface such as grass, the gliders are remarkably sturdy and will actually last very well. One final note to mention before we start getting into all the good ways to use these is that because they are so thin, it's important to one, make sure that they print consistently and that your bed is well leveled so that their weight is balanced. You don't want any wings to be warping or anything like that. And it's also good to note that because they are so thin, if you keep them in a warm car or in a reflective surface on a hot day, the wings themselves might actually start warping. So just be aware to keep these in the shade, to not leave them in a hot car. Otherwise, you might end up with a plane that is slightly wonky and won't fly in a consistent manner. All right, enough of that boring stuff. Let's get to the good stuff, how you're going to use it. In an elementary classroom, you can use this all the way from simple measurement to even then just various observations. Which plane flew farther? Which plane weighs more? Why do you think the plane that weighs more flies differently than the plane that weighs less? Things like that. Get the students to start doing these investigations. What happens when you adjust the wing flaps or the tail flaps? How does that affect the flight? Does it make it go farther? Does it make it go straighter? How about more up or more down? Have the students start really analyzing the different variables that they're doing just at a very simple level. At middle school and high school, you get a great chance then to expand upon these early observations and lead into a lot of great graphing and statistical analyses of all the variables. So you can control the number of rubber bands, the distance pulled back, you can control which of the planes you're using. And then when you are doing that, you're getting a chance to do scatter plots. You can look at the scatter plots and analyze the data. What is the standard deviation? What is the mean and absolute deviation on this? Are some of these designs more consistent than others? Why do you think those designs are more consistent? You can then look into elevation, the height of the plane at its highest point and analyze how that might have affected the overall distance traveled. 
What are the outside factors that are affecting the planes? Is it a windy day? How does that affect your flight? Things like that, where the students are having to be thinking about all of the situations that are going on around these airplanes. Then you can tie it in with your physics class and start talking about potential and kinetic energy as well as the transfer of energy, how the rubber band stores up power which then gets transferred to the airplane. At an elementary level you can talk about contact and non-contact forces, how gravity is what causes the airplanes, the gliders to come back down to earth, and then even just introducing the connections to the real world aviation industry. So what are some of the features that these gliders have that regular airplanes do as well? Okay, we have things called wing flaps and ailerons. What do those do? Tie it into aviation and have the students start investigating how real pilots utilize wing flaps, tail flaps, and ailerons to control their airplanes. And then you can have the students go out and try and see if they can recreate those same results using the gliders. Whether you are using this at an elementary level on measurement, at a middle school level doing Pythagorean proof to gather the distance, or at a high school level doing complex analyses of various data and controlling the variables to determine what the most optimal plane is as your students become engineers, you're getting a chance to have a lot of great STEM interaction and your students are absolutely going to have a blast.